few kids have remembered to bring something for Ruth. Anyone brought some money for Ruth? No? Okay. That's all right. I know it's a special... Yes? What's another way that we can get money? Okay, so I, uh, what we have been doing also downstairs is... Um, and I saw someone fill up our bin with the plastic bottles that get their 10 cent refund. So we've been collecting bottles too for Ruth, so that's really helped us. So um, thank you to those kids that have been putting them aside and bringing them along each week. That really helps us support Ruth and Peru. Peru is um, almost 10 years old. Uh, her birthday's in November, so she's got something coming up, which we actually um, provide a little bit extra so that she can have a special um, birthday too. One thing that she said in her letter that she really enjoys going to church and Sunday school through the program that Compassion runs. So that's really exciting too. Okay, also um, for those um, that regularly attend here, uh, I just wanted to remind you that we do have our, our offering and you can give in uh, lots of different ways. There, there is a bucket there too if you've come prepared to, uh, to work with the, the cash. Um, but yeah, look, it, it just reminds you that um, you can jump on, online and, um, or on our website, see all the details of how you can give. So how about now we just pray for all of the, uh, we pray for our offering and for, for um, the support that we can use to extend God's kingdom here in Belbarry and, and, and abroad. So let's pray. Dear Father, thank you, Lord, for what you have given us and how you bless us and love us. And Lord, we just pray that you will be able to use all of the gifts that we give to you, Lord, and uh, to extend your kingdom. And uh, yeah, so we just thank you, Lord, and uh, we pray that you would bless it, that it, will, um, that it will expound in many ways, Lord, and bless people in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so what I was thinking this morning, and I'm not going to be long, but uh, I've got a picture here that I wanted you to have a look at. And... Um, it sort of has a lot to do with one of my favorite verses, but here's a, here's a picture of, uh, I don't know, it looks like a, a big, long, windy trek, and you can see some, some of the, the hikers moved off this path because a, a, a big herd of sheep have come along. Now, I wonder, I wonder whether the sheep have taken this path before, and you can see how it gets really steep. Can you see how it gets really steep, kids, at the end there? And it goes back and forth to get up there. But maybe the shepherd knows where this path leads. And maybe it's to better pastures. Or maybe it's an area that is more not so, um, not so wild and willy and sheltered from, from the weather. But uh, I'm pretty sure that these sheep trust and know the shepherd. Yeah? So they're willing... It doesn't, there's not a, I, those guys on the side are just hikers, but, you know, the shepherd is not around. It's not like the shepherds are there corralling the sheep to stay on this path, but the, possibly the shepherd is at the front leading the sheep, and the sheep know that they're safe in his hands. Now, another story, another picture here I'd like to show you here. Hopefully that picture will make you feel warmer, okay? <laughs> yeah, I think... In this picture, I think the shepherd is out the front and the sheep, and, and the shepherd might be trotting down the snow and the sheep are following along. Or maybe the shepherd's got a donkey or something to make this path, but the sheep know the shepherd. I don't see any sheep there trying to bolt out the other way or off the path. They know the best path, don't they? Yeah. Now, this leads to one of my favourite verses, which is, in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your paths. Isn't that really a good verse? That when we do trust in the Lord and, um, and we look to him um, and, and acknowledge who he is, that he's going to lead us and direct our paths. And, um, you know... Only God is perfectly trustworthy and faithful, isn't he? And yet, you know, if I don't take time to get to know him, I will never...
Have you guys seen something like maybe this? There it is. Can you tell me what that is? What's that? Yeah. Amelia? What is it? A light bulb. It's not quite a light bulb, but it's... It, a lamp. Thanks, Pete. It is a lamp. Now, I was wondering whether you kids would, could, kids would know what a lamp is. But anyway, there's a verse in the Bible that says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. God's word, reading his word, can guide us and lead us. And there's other verses there which I'll flick through. Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God, my Saviour. My hope is in you all day long. And you know, even Jesus said, when he was being tempted, he said, man shall not live on bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. So what I thought we'd do now, kids, and I think the adults are going to help me out with this, we're going to learn a quick verse, okay? And I won't be long with this. Let's see if you guys can work it out. So are you ready? We'll say it all together on three. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Wow, kids, what's going on? Adults, don't give it away just yet. Okay, hang on. Let's have a look, right? I won't let you, you adults go ahead too. But what's that one, kids? I. I. So there's one little letter for I, okay, down there. Okay, let's see what the next one is. Okay, so when, kids, when you see like a letter with a big red cross through it, you cross that letter out that you think the picture's telling you about, and the plus H is add a H in. So what is that, kids? Have. have. So we've got I, I have. have. Oh, what is this one? Hey. Now this one, the adults, adults, don't give it away. This one might be the, the, the hardest one here. Okay, we've got a high five, haven't we? Yeah, what do you reckon it is? If we take away the five, what have we got from high five? Hi, okay, so the H-I goes down on those two first letters. Then we've got, hmm, what's this talking about? We've got a C and an E and an arrow pointing between. What letter do you think that would be? D. Okay, good try, Sam. Okay, so we've got H-I-D. Now, what is that picture of? Okay, it's not a cave. Maybe animals will live in this. What would animals live in? And it rhymes with ten. Den, yeah? Is that what you thought, Isabella? A pen. You thought a pen. Well, it's actually a den. Okay, yeah, animals do live in a pen. Sorry, my bad there. Okay, so what we've got so far, we've got I have hidden... You'll get this one really quick. Okay. I have hidden... What's that? It's not a finger, it is a finger, but who's, who's the finger pointing at? You. you. Plus an R? Your. I have hidden your, ooh, what's this one? Worm. It's a worm, that's right. Take away the M. What do you reckon it is, Isabella? Word. Word? Yes, okay. Crystal said I should just put the Microsoft Word symbol and everyone would have got that, but anyway. Okay. I have hidden your word, or what is this? Okay, kids, what's first? What's the first picture? It's not a can, a tin, okay? Now, I know we might need the adults to help us. What is that other thing up there? A tee, okay. That's the thing you put your golf ball on when you're going to do the big drive swing right at the start, okay? So if we have a tin and we minus the tee, what do we have? In, okay. What's happening here? Ten. Ten. No. So it's not sad. This, this emoji is cr cry, okay? Crying minus the CR plus the M, my. Okay, let's say it. I have hidden your word in my heart. Okay, lots of, lots of you, I know you adults are doing it. Come on, leave it for the kids. Okay, what's that? What's that, an ear? Is that an ear? And you put a H in front of the ear, and you put a T on the end, what do you have? 
heart. Okay, Ooh, now you kids might not know what this is. This is a particular type of hat, isn't it? Does anyone know what kind of hat this is? Yeah, Isabella? Top hat. Okay, it is a top hat. And what are we taking away? The op. So what do we have? Okay, let's do it. Okay. T, we don't have OP. H A T, what's that say? That. Okay. What's the next one? I. Okay, you guys are doing so good. Okay, what's this? You said it before, Amelia. No, that's not a lamp. A light. Okay, it's a light. So we're taking away the L and we're adding an M. What's that word say? Might. Okay. Let's say it all together now. See, I knew you guys would know it. See, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might. So what's that a picture of? That's a not, and you spell not. That, this is a bit hard for the kids. You spell not with a K in the front. We're going to take the K away, and it's not. Well, what's that? Is that a picture of sin? It's a bin. Thanks, Pete. And we're taking away the B and putting the S, and you've said it already. Sin. Now, this is a really hard one. The adults might help us with this. There's a chain there. We're taking away the CH. Can you think of this one, Isabella? And we're adding, we're adding an AG. AG, A-I-N, yep. Against. Wow, awesome. Okay. And who's that again? You. you. Let's say it all together, okay? You. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Now, kids, I don't know what your Bible looks like, but, you know, here's one here. This is, like, called the Big Rescue Bible. And I've got a Bible that Mum and Dad bought me a long time ago, which I've had. They all look a bit differently. Can I encourage you to read your Bible, okay? And hide God's Word in your heart. Let's just pray, and then we're going to hand over to Dan. Isn't that going to be exciting, okay? So let's pray. Let's bow our head. Dear God, thank you for the Bible. Help me to learn it and to know it and to hide it in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Thank you so much, Dan, and I'm going to hand over to you. So uh, we're, we're really looking forward to it. So guys, we have to, you know, listen to what Dan tells us to do, okay? Just a hint. Oh, good. Oh, am I on? Yes. Hello. Hi, everyone. I'm Dan. Now, what word is this? We have a D, don't we? And there's no crossing out any letters and an A and an N. And what is it? Good. Wow, you guys are good. Just wanted to keep that going. That was amazing. I might steal some ideas. Um, a verse memorization, Doug. Hey, uh, I've um, come from Capalaba in Brisbane, which is really nice. And I was driving out here and thinking, wow, it's pretty nice out here, isn't it? It's uh, beautiful. I, I, I haven't been out this way, but uh, thank you so much for having me. And I just want to say before I start, uh, for some of you who are thinking, oh man, we've come on the wrong Sunday. Uh, we should have, you know, it's just for the kids. Uh, I know the kids are going to love this, but my heart genuinely is that there's something for everyone today. Don't be fooled by the Britney mic and the yellow shirt. Um, this is just so I can move around and uh, fairly new device for me, but uh, I'm really enjoying it, and i um, going to tell some stories today, share some of my songs. Uh, I've got uh, three kids. I've been married for about, better check that, what, 12 years or something, I think, um, and uh, married to my wife, Sarah, and um, my heart is to write songs that kids love, but also that don't drive adults nuts. That's That's the key because you know you can play something for kids and it doesn't matter how good it is they'll just say again again and um yeah just like that exactly that's right nah yeah, that, that's so good well um 
Yeah. Are you all ready to have some fun? Yeah, yeah that's cool. Uh, well, why don't you turn to the person next to you and say, get ready to have some fun. I'll get my guitar. Hey, kids, do you want to um, do you want to come up the front out here? If you want, you're welcome to. It'll be fun. It'll be good. Or you can stay where you are. I really don't mind. Yeah, good one. What's your name, buddy? What's your name? High five. Wow, you're a strong boy. High five again. Wow, good to see you. Yeah. Uh, this song's called Mighty King. I'd love to share it with you. It's about the ups and downs. You know, it's easy to praise God when life is good and when things are going well. But the question is, what do we do when life gets difficult? And that's what this song is about. So uh, I'll do some actions you can join in. But kids especially, I want you to jump to your feet. And we're going to sing this song. All right, ready? Yeah, you can all jump to your feet. Go on. When life is good and everything is great, the sun comes out. It's time to celebrate in every situation, no matter what we face. Put your trust in Jesus. Let him lead the way like this. Lift your hands and sing. That's it. Fix your eyes on him. Lift your hands and sing. Because Jesus is a mighty king. Good. He turns dark to light. He turns wrong to right. He turns hate to love. Jesus is a mighty king. What's good? But when life gets hard, make a sad face. When we lose our joy, the clouds come out. It's time to make a choice in every situation, no matter what we face. Put your trust in Jesus. Let him lead the way. Lift your hands and sing. That's good. Fix your eyes on him. That's it. Lift your hands and sing. Because Jesus is a mighty king. Let it turn dark to light. It turns wrong to right. It turns hate to love. Jesus is a mighty king. Jesus is a mighty king. And he can do anything. Strong and mighty. Nothing is impossible for him. Jesus is a mighty king. He can do anything. Strong and mighty, nothing is impossible for him. Ready? Lift your hands and sing. Fix your eyes on him. Good. Lift your hands and sing. Because Jesus is a mighty king. He turns dark to light. He turns wrong to right. He turns hate to love. Jesus is a mighty king. One more time. Come on. Lift your hands and sing. Fix your eyes on him, good. Lift your hands and sing. Cause Jesus is a mighty king. He turns dark to light. He turns wrong to right. He turns hate to love. Yeah, Jesus is a mighty king. Oh, Jesus is a mighty king. He's a mighty, mighty, mighty king. Can we, just a little sound check, can we get the um, track up a bit louder? Is that possible? The, nah, nah, out, of, out front, out there. I think the, um, is that, um, yeah, I'll just run that again, uh, like this. Yeah, we'll just test it out here. Can you guys hear that all okay out there? Is that okay? Okay, perfect. That's good. We're going to do another song. This is fun. This is called, this is called Grow. And, um... God wants us to grow big in love and strong in faith, all right? So it's big in love and strong in faith. Can you do that with me? Big in love and strong in faith. That's it. Big in love and strong in faith. Big in love and strong in faith. And big in love and strong in faith. And big in love and strong in faith. And big in love and strong in faith. The big in love and strong in faith. The big in love and strong in faith. Sorry, I got a bit carried away. Um, and then he wants us to... Um, yeah, it's, it's about growing big and love and strong in faith. I'm just going to sing it for you. It's a lot easier. You ready? Come on, clap your hands like this. That's it. We'll start like this with a love heart sign, like this, right? Our heart is like a garden. 
Faith is like a seed. Come on, dig. God's the greatest gardener that you have ever seen. It might take a little while. But one thing you should know. He's pleased when little seeds begin to grow. Like this. We got to grow, grow, grow. Yeah. Dig in the we gotta go, go, go. Yeah. Strong in faith, good. We gotta go, go, go. Standing tall, just like trees that are planted in the Lord. That's good. You guys are great. You're helping me out. Good. Our heart is like a garden. We gotta pull the weeds. Come on now, deep and clear out all that rocky soil that stops those growing seeds. God's a pruning specialist. Can you do decisions like this? I'll tell you why. Because all the sheep that lead to fruit, she prunes to go. If you know it, I want you to sing. Come on. Go, go, go. Yep. Peek in love. Come on, I can't hear you. Beautiful. Strong in faith. Again. Go, go, go. Standing tall. Just like trees. Planted in the Lord. Again, come on! We gotta go, go, go. Deep in God. We gotta go, go, go. Muscle time. Stand in faith. We gotta go, go, go. Standing tall. Just a light tree that are planted in the Lord. Alright, I've got a very special craft for you to do, right? It goes just like this. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three, one, that's it. Keep that going. Here we go. Mighty trees, standing strong, through the drought, through the storm. Mighty trees, standing strong, through the drought, and through the storm. Come on, I want to hear you sing. Go, go, go. We gotta go, go, go. Strong in faith, yeah. We gotta go, go, go. Standing for good, just like trees that are planted in the Lord. Come on, we gotta go, go, go. Big in the big love, high. yeah. We gotta go, go, go. Strong in faith, yeah. We gotta go, go, go. Just like trees that are planted in the Lord. Oh, just like trees that are planted in the Lord. Come on, do that clap again, man. One, two, three. One, two, and one, two, three. Give yourselves lots of claps. And stop. And lots of claps. What's up? Hmm, lots of claps. Stop. Oh, you're very good. I want to hear you again because you've got beautiful voices. We gotta go, go, go. Big in love. We gotta go. Yeah. Strong in faith. Yeah, we gotta. Beautiful. Standing tall. Just like trees that are planted in the Lord. Oh, just like trees that are planted in the Lord. You can take a little seat. I want to show you the story behind that song. Uh, I've been doing this now for seven years, and uh, it really crept up on me. I only realized it this year. I'm like, oh, it's been seven years. How about that? And um, in probably 2017, I uh, just by God's grace, I travel around Australia churches and schools and there would have been over 3,000 uh, um, adults, mostly children, uh, who said, yeah, I want to start the journey with following Christ. I want, I want to give my heart to him. And it was absolutely amazing. I never thought I'd ever see that uh, in my whole life. Um, but here's what I realized. Children are very quick to say yes to Jesus and it's wonderful I mean it's a no brainer for them they're presented with the idea of forgiveness and they're like yeah why wouldn't I want to be forgiven 
Like, of course I do. So I, I saw children, that wasn't the issue if they would respond or not. And I was thinking, well, this is almost too easy. Like, what's happening? And I, I, and I was asking, well, what's the challenge here, Lord? And, it's, and, and, and the, the idea of the parable of the sower came into my mind. You know, Jesus talks about four soils that receive the seed and only one leads to fruitfulness. And my prayer quickly became, God, would you help these kids finish the journey? Would you help them stay strong? And that's why I wrote the song Grow because I'm so passionate about seeing young people um, start the journey with Jesus but also go through to the end. You know, when the world throws everything at them and when the challenges come their way, when the storms, you know, go against the house, if it, that it be built on the rock. So that's the story behind that song Grow. Um, I think God is so good. Uh, if you think God's good, give me a... Uh, no, just give me a big thumbs up and go, yeah! yeah! Okay, that's good. That's why we're going to sing this song, all right? Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, and uh, it's the reasons. Yeah, yeah, you're starting it. You're a legend. Everyone jump on your feet for one song, and then you can sit down. God is so good in every way. He's worthy of honor, worthy of praise. Slow to anger, quick to love. Full of compassion in all that he does Like this God is so good God is so good There's no end to his wonderful love Again, come on God is so good Yes, God is so good Then you do a dance move Dance around and shout it out God is so good Now you can make up your own dance move in that bit next time, okay? I want to see it He casts out the dark with his powerful light he goes to the dead and makes them alive. Keeps all his promises faithful and true. He always does what he says he will do. Sing with me. God is so good. God is so good. There's no end to his wonderful love. Again, God is so good. God is so good with your dead folks. Dead around and shout it out. God is so good. Come on, sing. God is so good. God is so good. There's no end to his wonderful love. Yes. God is so good. God is so good. Dance around and shout it out. God is so good. Come on and dance around and shout it out. God is so good. So, so good. You can really take a seat now. Oh, he is good. Who here can say they've seen God's faithfulness throughout their journey in their life? They've seen where he's been faithful, where he's come through, and, yeah? Show of hands. Hey, that's, that's great. Uh, we're going to talk about that later today, but what God has done for you in your life is the most powerful uh, the thing that you have when you're telling other people about Jesus. What he has done for you, I'll tell you why. Because no one can argue with it. No one can say, no, he hasn't. You know that God's been faithful. I know that God's been faithful. Um, so when I travel around, I've got my friend Jed with me. And he's a little guy who uh, has crazy hair, loves kids, has anyone seen Jed before? Has anyone here seen Jed? Okay, a few. Okay, well, he's been trained to come out on stage um, to any thunderous applause. So, would you, by way of thunderous applause, please welcome my friend, Jed! Thank you! Uh, Jed! Hi. Jed! Jed! He's being silly. He's doing this. He does this all the time. He's very naughty. He knows he's meant to come out now, but he's just doing hide and seek. But don't worry, I know exactly where he is because he hides in the same place every single time. Okay? And that is in my suitcase. Come on, Jed. I know you're in there. What is it with you and Heidi and bags of... <sighs> anyway. Come on. Oh, what is happening? <laughs> Okay. Seriously, Jed? Are you, are you actually serious? 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is not what it looks like. Um, uh, Jed is in his sleeping bag upside down. Jed, what's going on? Hello. Hi. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just hiding. Uh, okay. Why are you in your sleeping bag? Because I like to sleep. Uh, okay. Well, that's good. But now is not the time. Now is not the time at all. Seriously. The people are here. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Okay. So, seriously, please welcome my friend, Jed. <laughs> What is this? This is my all-purpose bag. Right, right. Oh, is it the shopping? Uh, uh, okay. Re really? Yes. Why, could, why, why have you got it on your head? So that I don't forget it. Okay. You think it's a good idea? No, I do not. Because I bet you find shopping very difficult with a bag on your head. Yes. Uh, okay. So, let's... Better be the last one. Oh, he's, what, what are you shaking for? I'm nervous. Okay. Oh, are there people here? Yes. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hi. So just say hi to me. Hi to me. No, no. Hi. Say hi. Say hi, Dan. Hi, Dan. Hi, kids. Oh, there's people here. This is good. This is very good. What is this? What? On your head. Um, it's my new microphone. I have not seen it. Okay. Well, it means we can walk around. It's pretty good. Oh, this is awesome. Jed, how are you going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm often good. Praise be to God. He's awesome. What's been happening, Jed? What's been happening in your life? Do, wait. Do you even ever brush your hair? No. Uh, why, why, why not? Because my arms don't work. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay. Well, you probably can't see anything. Now, because your hair's covering your eyes. Okay, can you see now? No. W why? Because my eyes are plastic. <laughs> right. Well, just, just next time, just keep that between you and me, okay? Okay. Okay. What's been happening, Jed? Well, I got a really, 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 really important decision to make. That's good. That's good. Have you ever had that? Yes, I have, I have had that before. Have had important decisions to make. What do you do? Well, the trick to making important decisions and doing it well, Jed, is talking to people who know more than you. That's probably my one tip, right? So you ask them the question, and that's very, very helpful. So, in fact, you can go to the source of all knowledge and wisdom. Who, hey, me? Uh, no, not you. Huh? Well, Jed, I would never go to someone who wears bags on the head and ask them for advice, okay? Um, the, the, knowledge, the source of all knowledge and wisdom is Jesus. It's God. He knows everything. And even better, he knows the future. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's amazing. So he could guide us. How? Well, he could speak to us. How? Uh, well, lots of ways. Like what? Well, um, well, okay, I'll give you one. Um, definitely through reading the Bible. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. But here's the key. You've got to read it with a heart of faith. Can I get everyone to say a heart of faith? <laughs> See, our posture in our heart, our attitude in our mind means we're showing God we're ready to listen. You can read the Bible with cynicism. That means you don't really think you're going to get anything out of it. I don't think you will if you read it like that. But you know what? When someone opens the word of God with a heart of faith, you could have read a verse maybe a hundred times before, but if God wants to show you that one for today, it's like it jumps off the page at you. He, he could speak to us. It's a bit like a walkie-talkie. So we can talk to him? Yes. How? Um, well, through prayer. Prayer is very good. Prayer and the Bible are awesome. So how do you know all this? Well, I'll show you a Bible verse. Check this out. We can read it out together. Come on. Let's go. Ready? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Stop. Okay, yeah, what? So, you got to trust in the Lord. Yes. And eat grass. No. Huh? What? 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 That's what it says. Okay, Jed. Were you even looking before when, when we, we saw the pictures of like the shepherd leading the sheep? Huh? No, that's right. You're asleep. Um, it's like we're sheep. Really? Yeah, it's just like a, you just got to imagine like you're a sheep. 
Yeah, no, not really. But, you know, it's like God is our shepherd. He guides us. And uh, sheep really want safe pasture. Like if a sheep have safe pasture, that's everything they need. They're like, give me lots of grass and don't let me die. I'm happy. It's pretty cool. Let's keep reading because the verse keeps going. Let's read together. Come on. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. So there's a reward. Yes. And it's a torch. No. Huh? It says it's bright, broad. Uh, okay. So can I give you another tip, Jed, as well as reading the Bible with a heart of faith? Sure. Read it in community. Read it with other people who love Jesus. Because here's an awesome promise. If two people are gathered together, two or more are gathered together, because of Jesus, he promises he's there with them. Now, we're doing that today. And if God's true to his word, he's here with us now. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that cool? So good. Thank you, Jesus, that you're here that you can guide us, that you love us. So, Jed, look, honestly, we even saw this one today. I love it. We read this out. Let's read this out again. Here we go. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3, verse 5. So if we were reading this together, yes, uh, if I didn't understand something, yeah, then I could ask you. Yeah, or whoever you're meeting with. Absolutely. So, I mean, what do you think this means? I don't know. Okay, well, let's go through it a bit at a time. Trust in the Lord. What, what, what would it mean to trust in the Lord? Well, he's trustworthy, like he does what he says. That's great. I think I like that. It's really good. With all your heart, what do you think that means? Like with all you got. Correct. Really good. Do not depend on your own understanding. Oh, I know that one. Okay, what is it? It means don't use your brain. Uh, no, it doesn't. Huh? No. So, no. <laughs> it's okay, Jed. It's all right. We, it, it's good to try. Thank you. Good. Uh, but here's the thing. God's given us a brain, and he wants us to use it. But we just got to remember when we use our brain that God's brain is bigger than ours. we just got to remember that. So he might know something, well, often, will know things that we don't know. That's why it's so important to go to the source of all knowledge and wisdom. Seek his will in all you do. What do you reckon? Oh, uh, like, find out what God wants. Yes, I love it. And what do you think the last thing means? Well, he will show you which path to take. You know, like, we've got different paths, different journeys, different choices to make. And he can guide us. Oh, that's what it means. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what, 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 did, what did you think it meant? No, don't worry. No, 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 I'm curious. Well, what did you think it meant? I thought it meant, won't laugh. Well, I, I don't know. Can't make any promises. Okay, well, well, I thought it meant we had to take a path. Right, right. Like on the ground. Okay. Like steal one. What, what? Like steal a walkway. No, 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 no. I was getting worried. No, no, Jed. I thought I had to get a tractor. Jed, no. And dig it up. No. And then carry it away in bags. No. All under the cover of darkness. No, Jed, this is not what it means. I was getting stressed. I'm sure you were. I thought I was going to get arrested. No, Jed, honestly. Ah! No, Jed, calm down. Just breathe. <laughs> Just, just a bit slower. Okay, a bit, a bit, a bit gentler. <laughs> Jed? Yes. Did, did you even brush your teeth? No. Oh. I don't even have teeth. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes. You, you all right? Yes. Okay, uh, this is why we should read the Bible with a heart of faith, yes, and in community, yeah. If you want God to speak to you, I wonder if you look at your life and say, am I doing that? Where's my heart attitude when I'm opening the Bible? Am I on my own? Do I feel alone in my Christian faith or am I doing life with other people? I think these are really awesome questions to think over. And I think when we find these things, that's why this place is so precious. That's why this is a community. You know, everyone's welcome here. And uh, I think uh, some of these things are the greatest treasures that we have. It's the thing that society is crying out for. They're desperate, desperate for community. 
And so, um, yeah, I'll just leave that with you. Dan, this is so good. Thank you for helping me. Well, I don't know everything, Jed, but, um, yeah, it's good to get around people, right? Sure. Yes. All right. Hey, Jed, you said you had an important decision to make. Yes. What was it? You want to know? Yes. Okay. Ready? Uh, yes. I thought, I was wondering if I should have chocolate topping. What? Or strawberry topping on my ice cream. Really? Yes. That, that's it? Yes. You said it was big. It's life-changing. Jed. It, okay, for stuff like that, just, just ask, do a survey. Ask the crowd. Let's just do it now. Huh? Just go with it. Here we go. On the count of three, deciding once and for all, no pressure, chocolate or strawberry. One, two, three. Chocolate. Yeah, chocolate. Thank you. See? Cool. This is good. Yeah. Community guidance. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yes, okay. Awesome. Jed? Yeah? That'll do. What are you going to do now, Jed? I'm going to read the Bible. Good. But first, yes, I'm going to go to sleep. Huh? Because I'm tired. Uh, okay. Good night. Oh, oh, you mean now? Yeah, good night. Uh, but Jed, good night, kids. But Jed. <laughs> well, that's one good thing about Jed is he goes down to sleep straight away. Can you give him a big round of applause as I put him down to sleep? And you know what, kids, a long time from now, I mean a long time from now, when you're all grown up, you'll have little, little kitties of your own and you'll have to do this thing called the night routine, okay? It's where you just put them down to sleep, all right? It's a thing, trust me, all right? It's, you just think, yeah, go to sleep. But don't worry, it's as easy as that. You just say, good night, and they go, Whoosh! And they're out straight away. And they just, they go to sleep without arguing or anything. And then you've got heaps of free time and heaps of energy in the evenings. It's really good. Just ask your parents. <laughs> it's not true. Are we, are we good? Are, are we having fun? Yeah. You enjoying yourself? And I just hope whether it's a line in a song or a scripture verse or maybe just a, um, I don't know, a, a side comment or anything, just today that we have our hearts open for faith. I pray that God will speak to us. Um, and we've talked about the Bible. That's why I wrote this song. It's called God's Amazing Book. You can sit down for this one. Goes up here. God wrote an amazing book. He's given us his word. It's the most amazing book you've ever seen or heard. God can tell us what he's thinking. We can hear him speak. Everything is written in the B-I-B-L-E. God wrote an amazing book, His promises inside. It will never fade away, it's active and alive. We can write it in the notebook of our memory. Because everything is written in the B-I-B-L-E. It's God's amazing book, I guess. London is right like people want and take a look. Do some binoculars. Have a read and see. It's God's amazing book. Yeah, powerful and mighty. Everything is written in the B I B L D. Right, we've seen the chorus next time. You can help me out with that one, all right? But hands up if you like food. Yeah, well, the Bible is like good food for your spirit. So rub your tummies like this. It's like good food for our spirit, helping us to grow. Patch your head, packed with lots of wisdom in it, satisfies our soul. It's sharper than the sharpest sword, the truth to set us free. Everything is written in the B I B L E. It's God's amazing book. Yeah, nothing is quite like it. Come and take a look. Have a read and see, it's God's amazing book, powerful and mighty. Everything is written in the B I B L D. Well, everyone, can I get you to clap your hands like this? That's it. It's the Bell Barry Community Church percussion section. Yeah, keep that going, okay? Here we go. Genesis to Revelation, story of God's love. Holy Spirit inspiration, message from above. Excellent for navigation, the lights that we can't see. Everything is written in the B-I-B-L-E. It's God's amazing book, yes. Nothing is quite like it. Come on and take a look. Have a read and see. It's God's amazing book. 
powerful and mighty. Everything is written in the B I B L E. Oh, everything is written in the B I B L E. Woo! Give yourselves a big round of applause. Good job. Well, when God guides us, I feel like we can think of it like two ways. All right? One way could be like a motorboat. Now, it's more like us. Are we a motorboat or are we a sailboat? Now, let me tell you a little bit about sailboats. Um, for the start of this year, I went on a little family adventure. We put everything in the car and drove down to Hobart. And we were down in Hobart for five months, January to end of May. And it was like a creative sabbatical, family time, time out, wonderful life-changing time but you know what was amazing about living there not just the beautiful view that we were blessed with on the water but the fact that these sailboats would just cruise past all the time and on on Wednesday afternoons they would race each other they would just huge numbers of them go by and uh they're pretty amazing has anyone done sailing before yeah anyone yeah cool um if you were to put me in a sailboat right now it would just be embarrassing. It would be a spectacle of comedy. Uh, it, essentially, I would be betting on capsizing uh, within the first maybe three or four minutes. Uh, and if you gave me a direction to go in, I thought it would just be laughable. I doubt I would even make it. Because it's a skill. You've got to know how the, the tides work. You've got to know especially how the wind works. And you've got to be sensitive to it. So you, a skilled sailor will be anticipating changes in the wind and therefore changing the sail to get the maximum thrust from the wind in the right direction. And, but the, the, if you were to put me in a motorboat, that'd be okay. Because when you're in a motorboat, you don't need to know anything about the wind. It doesn't even matter. Well, it's nice to know, but you can just turn on the motor and if I want to go forward, I'll go forward. Want to go back, I can go back. Left and right. It's great. Don't need to care about the wind at all. Now, you know what? I wonder if sometimes when we're letting God guide us, are we more like being in a motorboat or in a sailboat? Are we really not listening at all? We're just doing what we think is right and going? Or are we listening and watching for the changes in the wind? See, the good thing about a motorboat when you feel like you're completely in control and you can go anywhere you want. I mean, it's exactly that. But you know there's a limitation. If you want to go really anywhere, at some point, that boat has got to stop and turn back to harbour. It's going to run out of fuel. But you know what's so special about that sailboat? Is that, sure, it's risky. There might, not, there might be times when there's no wind at all. That's the doldrums. That was like... Worst nightmare for a sailor, just no wind blowing, no boat going. But you know what about that sailboat? That sailboat can go all the way around the globe. It's, I see that a bit like the great adventure that God has for us. He's got, he wants to guide us. But we might have a bit less control than we like, but he invites us to step out and take us to places and people that we've never been to before on exciting things. So I wonder, what is your life like if you think about it? Is it more like the motorboat or the sailboat? And my encouragement is that we live the sailboat life. And, we, and here's the thing. When you know God's so good, you can trust him. And uh, I think some of you might know this song. It's called uh, That's How We Know God Loves Us. He's not a God who just says he loves us. He's a God who loves us. Go on, jump in here for the song. Here We are loved by God, it's true, oh, more than we could ever know. There's so many things that he's done to let it show. What did he do? Well, he left his throne in heaven above. That's how he knows God loves us. Then he came down to this awful bath. That's how he knows God loves us. Then he took our place. And took our sin, that's how we know God loves us. With open arms, he welcomes.
how can I sin? That's how we know God loves us. Next time you can all do that bit and I'll do the other. We'll do an echo thing. It'll be kind of good. That's good. Come on, let's sing it. Here we go. We are loved by God more than we could ever know. There's so many things that He's done to you let it show. What did He do? He left you strong in heaven above. You sing. Good. And he came down to this earth for us, go! Yeah, and he took our place and took our sin. It's true. And with open arms, he welcomes us in. Everyone, that's how we know God loves us. God gave his only son, yeah, his life for everyone. The price to bring us home So we'd never be alone again God gave his only son Gave his life for everyone Made the price to bring us home So we'd never be alone Look at all the things he's done To show us how much he loves us so we know just how much He loves us, and that's how we know God loves us. Yeah, that's how we know God loves us. On here, 'cause He left His throne in heaven above, and He came down to this earth for us. Good. And he took our place and took our sin. And with open arms, he welcomes us in. Yeah, that's how we know God loves us. Yeah, that's how we know God loves us. Praise God. Take a seat. I want to share your story. We've been talking about boats. We've been talking about God guiding us. <coughs> and I want to tell you a story about the lost boat. Now, for some of you, you might have heard of this. If you have, then it's a good reminder to tell it to others. I think there's other people here who actually need to hear this as well today. And you know what? It's about a boy called Damien who used to walk by the water every day. And the thing he loved the most was not the big motorboats. It wasn't even the big sailboats, but it was the little model sailboats. He saw them. Everyone had them, and he wanted one, but he didn't know where to get them from. He was speaking to people. Well, now, where did, you, where did you find that sailboat? I want one of them. And everyone said, well, we made it. We uh, got the wood and put it together. And so he learned how to do it. Saved up all his money, got the best wood, carved it together, put a tall mast on it and two sails and flag at the top. It was his pride and joy. He put his initials on it too. And every day he would walk out and sail that little boat in the water before school. Now, one day he went out and just as he was laying the boat down like always, this freak storm came through and just blew the boat out of his hands and out of reach and just kept blowing it out to sea. And this boat got smaller and smaller and smaller. And there was nothing that Damien could do. He was devastated. He came back to that spot day after day trying to find that boat. He would talk to people. Have you seen my boat? It looks like this. It's got a tall mast. It's got two sails and, 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 and a flag at the top. He couldn't find it. He couldn't stop thinking about it either. And one day... Weeks later, he was wondering what he was going to do and something caught his eye in a, in a shop window and it was a little, it was something made out of wood, had a tall mast, two sails and a flag at the top and he ran up to it and he, he said, this looks just like my boat and as he looked closer, he could see his initials inscribed on the side of the boat. With great joy, he ran through bust through those doors straight up to the counter and said, excuse me, Mr. Shopkeeper, 
you've got my boat and I'd like it back, please. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, see that boat in the window? That's mine. I made it. And he goes, uh, sorry to break it to you, mate, but everything in this shop I've actually paid for. And if you want it, you can have it, but you're going to have to pay for it. That boat there, fisherman sold it to me two weeks ago. And it can be yours for $100. Now, for Damien, that's all he had. He'd been saving carefully and he was very careful with his spending, but he knew straight away what he should do. It wasn't even a thought. He just ran straight out of that shop, back home, got all his money and laid it out on the table. And that boat was placed back in his hand. And if you were there, you would have seen the biggest smile on the boy's face. If you were there and you walked with him back to the harbour, you would have heard him, you, you would have seen him check this time that there wasn't any storms coming through. But if you were there, you would have heard him say to the boat, little boat, you are now mine twice. You're twice mine. You're mine once because I made you, and you're mine twice because I bought you back, because I paid for you. And he said, welcome home, and let it sail again once more in the water. And you know, the devil loves to tell us lies because that's when they have power when we believe them. If we don't believe them, then there's no power there at all. But that's one of his main weapons, his lies. And one lie that he would love you to believe is that God doesn't care for you. He doesn't have time for you. He's disappointed with you. And yet, that couldn't be further from the truth. He loves you so much. Sure, we have all walked our own way. And sin does hurt the heart of God, but it does not change his father's heart, his love for us. He loves you so much. And if maybe you're wrestling with that today, and you might remember this story of the boy who loved the boat. And if a boy can love a boat that much, how much more can a loving God love you? You know, we are his once because he created us, all of us. And we're his twi uh, twice because he paid the price for us. It wasn't $100. There was a death price. Yeah. See, the life of an innocent had to be given so that the life of the guilty could be saved. And I just want to share this Bible verse for you where it says this. Can we just do... Oh, I've got it down here. Here we go. Can we read this out together? Here we go. The payment for sin is death, but God gives us the free gift of life forever in Christ Jesus our Lord. Wouldn't it be really bad news if it was just the first sentence and then that was it? See ya. It's like, man, that'd be a bit grim, wouldn't it be? But let us not shy away from the truth of the reality of sin. There is a payment of death, but it doesn't end there. God's love for us is so much that he gave us the free gift, which was actually him dying in our place. How much would you have to love someone to die instead of them? I reckon there's only a few people you can count that you'd do that for. Yet if there was just you here on this earth, Jesus would have done that for you. I love telling stories because they're easy to remember, but also they get a message across just differently. And the most powerful story of all is actually what, for those of us who are following Jesus here, is what's your story? What, what has Jesus done in you? It's very important to remember these things because we can tell them to people. And I'll, I'll just start by telling you one thing that Jesus has done for me in my life, okay? It, let's backtrack about a year and a half. Start of 2021. We just had the run of COVID. And we were starting to open up a bit. And for me, someone who was, had many years of just traveling around and, and that was my sort of natural rhythms, it was a big shake-up. I'm, I'm an extrovert. I get energized by seeing people. And all of the things that gave me energy and joy, or I should say a lot of the things, were just taken away like that. It was very challenging for me. Maybe controversially, a bit of an introvert's dream. COVID, who knows? <laughs> but for me, it was really difficult. And, and we got through it, and I was like, oh, thank goodness. And then it was starting to come back again. And I was going, God, I don't know what I can do. Like, this is very challenging for me. We're wanting to buy a house, and everything's going crazy. Like, the prices are going nuts. And, I don't, and uh, 
I can't be sure that there's going to be enough work out there, really. And I felt anxiety, and I don't normally feel anxiety, but this is what I want to tell you. In an instant, in this moment, I just sensed God's presence. It was All I can explain it like is I just knew Holy Spirit was right there. It was like it was just right there. And straight away, my anxiety went to zero. I, I, the only way I can describe the feeling, because I was worried about finances, is the feeling you might get if you had $50 million in your bank account. You know, and some of you are going, oh, that'd be nice. Some of you might be going, I do have $50 million in my bank account. No. Uh, but that feeling of like, I don't have to worry. All my expenses, anything I could ever need, I'm sorted. I had that feeling. How good is that? And I was thinking about all the people, people who chase that, who chase that, but it's like, God, here, he gives it to you. So that's my story. My question to you is, if I was to put it in a sentence, I'd say this, right? Jesus set me free from the power of worry and has given me peace. Jesus set me free from the power of worry and has given me peace. I wonder what it is for you. You were thinking about your life. What would you put in there? Jesus set me free from the power of something and has given me something. It's one of the greatest things you can do is share that story. I've shared a little bit of mine, and I won't labor this at all, if we, but if there's anyone here who would say, I would like to share in just one sentence just something that Jesus has done in my life. Maybe there's a microphone I can run around, but if we've got that up the back, I, I'll just give about 20 seconds. If no one does it, that's fine, but it's one of the richest things in this, in this session is people sharing. And sorry to put you on the spot, but is there anyone here who would like to and there is no pressure. I won't, I won't walk away going, oh, no one put the hand up. Does anyone who'd like to just share that? Someone over here, thank you. <laughs> you can turn it off. <laughs> Try now. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Great. Yeah. Uh, one sentence. Yeah, filling that in up there. Like oh. you. Um, Jesus set me free from the power of infertility and he gave me three boys. Amazing. <laughs> Praise God. That's so good. Does anyone else, anyone else want to share before we move on? Just one more or two or, or none is fine. There's no pressure, but that's so good. Anyone want to share? No. Whatever your story is, I encourage you to think about it. And some of you might go, but if I do know my story, how am I going to tell anyone? It could be scary, right? I mean, I'm sure a lot of you had an answer to that, but you're saying, oh, I just don't want to be the next one. I encourage you to have courage because some people are open and really want to hear it. The thing we're really afraid of is if people go, well, maybe they'll laugh at me. Maybe they'll think I'm weird. But can I just give you a little test before you do it? is that people are in two groups. They're either cockroaches or moths. Cockroaches or moths. Now, when you, bring, when you turn the light on in a room, the cockroaches scurry away, but the moths fly in. Cockroaches or moths. And all you've got to do is bring light, a little bit of light into your conversation. Just see what happens. If they're a cockroach, let them scurry away. All good, they're not ready yet. Trust in God's timing. But the moths will go, tell me more. What do you mean you meet with this awesome group of people on a Sunday? What do you mean you've, you've got friends that you share life with and, and it's changed your life? Cockroaches or moths? Well, I'm going to finish with a song, but um, I just want to say... It's been so wonderful being here today, spending some time with you. And um, I'll be up the back afterwards. There's a table there. I've got some resources. I do have CDs for those of you who still have a CD player in your car. But I've also got digital lyric videos, <coughs> which are the ones you've seen here today. And uh, I c you, you can pay for them here, and I can send you the download link. Um, if, you'd like, if, if you're passionate about this ministry and you say, oh, I want to do something for kids, but you're not really sure how, you can partner with me with prayer especially. And if you'd like to join my mailing list, I can just 
tell you where I'm traveling, please come by and ask about that. I'll have my iPad out and you can put your details in. I don't send out many emails. If you want to talk to me about anything, financial support or prayer, there's no pressure at all. But just wanted to say thank you for having me today. It's been a real privilege and an honor. And um, my heart is that the next generation will have the truth of God's word stuck in their head through the power of song and just keep on drip feeding. We all know what it's like to have that song stuck in our head. So why not be truth and love about who God is and what he's done? So that's what it's all about. And uh, we've been talking about stories and God guiding us. Maybe I'll just pray real quick and then sing one last song. Jesus, I pray your blessing over this community. You love this group. This is the body of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for uh, your provision of this place here, uh, for the community here. And I pray that it would just be a real shining light to others around. I pray, Lord, that um, more than ever before, people would be open and honest about uh, the things they're going through, that they would share more and more of who, who they are with each other and with the people around. Lord, that they bring light into their conversation and trust you to guide them in everything. In Jesus' name, we all said, amen. amen. Well, let me sing this song for you. It's what it's all about. Uh, this, this is a story song about loving God and loving others. up to Jesus and said, hey teacher, there's a question going round in my head, what's the most important rule, the one thing we should do, the one thing we should do, and he said, love God, love one another, cause God gives his love to you, he does, love God, love one another, so I'm the one Jesus talked about this again at the Last Supper. Jesus was having a meal with his friends. He had something important to say to them. A new commandment I give to you. Love one another like God loves you. Love one another like God loves you. Love God. Love one another. That's it. Because God gives his love to you. Love God, love one another, that's your number one too. When you love the Lord with all of your heart, it gives joy to the world and glory to God. Love God, love one another, this God gives his love to you. Now there's an easy part to sing now, when you catch it, just sing it back to me, come on. Love God and love one another again. Love God and love one another again. Come on. Love God and love one another. Love God and love one another. Let's do a key change. Love God, love one another. God gives his love to you. You guys, love God, love one another. When you love the Lord with all of your heart, it gives joy to the world and glory to God. Love God, love one another. Cause God gives his love to you. Yeah, cause God gives his love to you. Thank you so much, Bill Barry Community Church. It's been wonderful spending time with you today. Love God and love one another. Help me out. Love God and love one another. Love God and love one another. Let's sing that again. Come on. Love God and love one another. Love God and love one another. Love God. Love God and love one another. God bless you. Thank you for having me today. I'll see you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Am I on? Thank you so much, Dan. It's been wonderful, and I hope, kids, you've enjoyed yourself. But the morning's not over yet. Now, if you have been sitting on a chair, you want to make sure if you've gone down the back...
come back down and sit on the chair because, kids, what I want you to do now is I want you to pick up your chair and turn it over. Now, you might find something taped underneath your chair. Have a look. Okay, and if you don't, if you've been sitting on a chair, you can have a look. Go on, let's pick up all the chairs. And if you find a star, come on, turn them upside down. Let's see. Now, if you haven't been sitting on the chairs, I don't know. If, oh, okay, we've got one here. Yeah, okay, so grab that star. You can pick it up. Now, what you can do with that star is um, a little bit later you can go down and you can see Dan and you can pick a DVD or CD or, you know, get mum to go with you because maybe mum might prefer the digital uh, copy of Dan's song. So who's found the stars? There's three stars, so how many have we got? You got one, two, there's one more. Quickly. Turn them all upside down. Yell out when you find So what have we got? We've found it. Okay, three stars. Okay. Everyone, uh, thank you so much for coming, and um, it's been great to have you along. We've got a special morning tea, and kids, um, I've seen what's out there, so kids, you've got to be quick because there's, um, there's some really nice cupcakes there, and, um, but there's not a hundred of them, okay? <laughs> so kids, are you going to beat the adults out there? Yeah, I think you might do. Yeah, okay. So uh, thank you so much for coming and it's been great having you. Um, enjoy your week and uh, thank you so much. Make sure you hang about and talk to someone that you haven't seen before. There might be some new faces here. But uh, I don't know, kids, do you re can you remember the verse we learned? What's the first, first word? I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Okay, remember kids, go home, read your word, but also if you're new here, come and join in and do that together with us, okay? So yeah, welcome and uh, enjoy morning tea. Thank you.